Okay, both for me and hopefully for some of you, so stay tuned for that. Well, what you see behind me is the Box Apex 4, although box, like, everything is so customizable, there's really no specific model I can give you. But what I can say is the interior of this PC is very special. So let me show you. So this is from a company called Box. They're B-O-X-X, -X, that's two X's, or B-O-X-X.com. They're a company based out of Austin, Texas, and they build uh, like high-end data analysis, video editing, rendering, those kinds of machines. They also have things like GPU servers, um, anything you could want for your high-end, high-performance computing tasks. Uh, they definitely have it. So. What you see here is a beautiful two RTX 8000 GPUs, also a Titan RTX. Uh, this I just happened to slap in there. I had one lying around as one does. Uh, so I threw that in there. So yeah, the cable here and also the cables for this uh, hard drive, uh, that's on me. <laughs> that's my job, don't hold that against them. Uh, and so yeah, the, that's pretty much the heart of this machine, at least to me. Uh, then you've got two Intel Xeon Gold CPUs. I can never keep it straight what the model numbers are for Intel Xeon Gold G uh, CPUs, rather. What I can say is that's 12 cores each, so 24 threaded cores, therefore, like, it's 48 core threads, basically, uh, which is indeed useful for pre-processing, but I will just admit most of my work involves the GPUs, for sure. Now, the RAM here is 256 gigabytes of RAM. Again, very useful for pre-processing. Also very useful for things like reinforcement learning uh, for like memory and, and such. So yeah, quite the honking machine. There's also a one terabyte M.2 drive. The CPUs are water-cooled. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. It's a 1300 watt PSU, fully customizable. Unlike, so not too long ago, I reviewed the Lenovo data science workstation and my biggest complaint there was you, you couldn't upgrade or change like GPUs. You couldn't even add GPUs. Even though the slots were there to add GPUs, you couldn't do it because the, the PSU was like all hardwired. There was no, you couldn't customize it with like extra plugs and stuff. Whereas here there's extra plugs. I could do all, whatever I wanted to do from the point of buying uh, the machine. So that's really cool. Now, what the heck do we, or what does somebody use a machine like this for? So a little bit ago, I did a cloud versus local computing kind of comparison to kind of talk to you guys about like, at what point should you buy actual local hardware? And I'm not here to sell you on a machine like this. Um, I will say, I mean, if, you, if you're interested in high-end machines, you can, you can go, you can get anywhere from like $1,000 and be, have a decent-ish machine to start off doing deep learning all the way up to something like this, which is, closer to like $30,000. Now, the argument to should you buy, should you not buy is the same no matter how much, you know, computing uh, power there is there. It's all kind of the same argument and generally it boils down to, you can check out that video, but I'll summarize it. So in the video, I kind of show you based on the actual prices on websites, you know, like AWS and Linode and Azure and all that. But the gist of that is after about a cumulative of two months, so either if you're training something for two months straight or you're running a model for two months straight, although I will just remind everybody that to train a model, you definitely need GPUs. To run a model, oftentimes, unless you have just an incredible amount of queries per second uh, to this model, to run a model, you can usually get away with running it on CPU and RAM. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but if you're training models for two months cumulatively over the course of maybe one or possibly two years, depending on how uh, acceptable it is to you to kind of run on older hardware, um, then, and, and that also has a bit of a stipulation because the cloud GPU providers, most of them are still on K80 GPUs. Some of them have some V100s and nothing more, right? Uh, Linode has the most recent, uh, I believe they're offering still the RTX 6,000 GPUs and you can get up to four of those um, on a single machine. Anyway, um, so that's kind of the argument of whether or not you should buy it, but then, you know, what do we even do with 96 or actually with the Titan RTX that I threw in there, that's actually 120 gigabytes of VRAM. What the heck do we do with that? Um, obviously, they, you know, the, the clearest thing is to have just like a monster model, okay? So a model that you could not have on smaller, uh, 
bits of hardware. So right now what I'm working on is a chatbot model. This has kind of been the, uh, the, the, the white whale for me because we, we were, I was able to train, um, I say we because now it's Daniel and I are working on this, but the first chatbot model that I ever built was the one that we used for the uh, Twitch stream. And that model uh, is the best one I've ever gotten. <laughs> And it was very small, and it it didn't have very much data, and it's not the greatest model. It's not actually that great. And so trying to make that better has just been, like, the most impossible thing ever. <laughs> so right now what I'm working on is this, this model here that is currently in training that has had some pretty good results is 20 total layers of 1024... Uh, units per layer. I mean, this is a monster of a model. It is maxing out both the RTX 8000s. Um, I'm not using the R uh, Titan RTX only because, so these cards are 48 gigabytes of VRAM, 48 gigabytes of VRAM, 24 gigabytes of VRAM. So I'm actually not using the Titan RTX because just because of the architecture of what we're actually training here. It just makes sense. One of these GPUs becomes the encoder. One of the GPUs becomes the decoder. So 10 layers on this one, 10 layers on that one. Um, it just works out that way, which is why having multi GPUs isn't necessarily always going to work or be faster. Uh, if it is all on the same machine, it does, it does work pretty well. Um, but you do pay a price for sending data from this GPU to this GPU. So if it's just one time, it's okay. But as you scale out GPUs, it does become a little more challenging to get things to keep being fast. But again, you can build models that you just simply could not build <laughs> without multiple GPUs. In this case, especially if you're able to utilize, utilize the NVLink, it is effectively pretty close to being one whole GPU. So anyway, yeah, so very exciting. Uh, lots of things to look forward to on the channel for what I can do. And the other thing I was thinking about was with a machine like this, I know that most people watching this video will never be either they won't have a machine like this or they won't even have access to it. Even in the cloud, this machine would be quite expensive to run hourly. So um, I'm trying to think what this would be. I mean, it would probably be maybe close to like $10 an hour to, to run this machine in the cloud. I mean, so, so you really don't have time to train a model. And for example, since I've received this machine, I've been running it 24 seven for two months straight, just constantly doing R and D on this chatbot. Um, that, that adds up really quick. And like I said, um, that, that after about the two month mark, you'd start having to wonder, uh, is this making much sense? <laughs> so, um, you know, to, to run in the cloud versus man, I could just actually own the hardware and it would, it would be cheaper. So, uh, anyway, so that's what I've been doing. But then I started wondering what if I, now I don't know how this will work. I don't know I know how it will work, but I don't know if it will work. <laughs> and that is I'm considering opening the door to allowing you guys, the community, to make a submission of code. It needs to be code that's on GitHub. Send me a link to the GitHub uh, to either Harrison at pythonprogramming.net. That's probably the best thing to do is just email it to me. So Harrison at pythonprogramming.net. Uh, but you can come into Discord. You can post a comment or whatever. Um, make a submission of something you think Either it's your your code or maybe some larger project. So like the uh, the the chatbot thing, uh, at least it started off as being basically it was no. I don't think I made any change to the the Google's uh, NMT, and then that's neural machine translation, and that's really for languages like one language to another language, uh, and that is what the current best chatbot has ever been was. It was just straight NMT. And instead of doing, you know, English to German, I did English to English. So an English comment to an English response. Um, and that works. <laughs> and it works pretty well for a deep learning uh, chatbot model, but um, I, I, I want more. And so, yeah, we've now we, as in me and Daniel, have been trying to slowly kind of tweak things and change things and see, can we do a little better? And recently I actually had a, a, an amazing output from one of these models and I, I I know what I kind of want to do in the next few steps and try to figure out, can, can I eke out slightly better responses there? But anyway, it just takes a long time. That's why we want a machine like this. But getting back to what I was saying, um, I'm, I'm willing to open the door to just giving the opportunity to the community to submit some idea, not ideas, no, <laughs> code. It has to be running code. Uh, but if you have something like that, either it's your project or someone else's project that you think makes sense for a machine like this. So it needs to be, you know, don't send me cats versus dogs. Don't send me some MNIST, you know? Um, 
Send me something that you that either is your project or someone else's project that you think would benefit from this machine, and I will at least consider uh, putting it up. If I can't read the code and understand it to 100%, it's not being run on the machine. Um, but just thought, you know, that would be kind of cool if it can work. I don't even know if that will work. I don't know if that um, is just going to be too much wasted time or something. Um, but I'm willing to just see what do people have because I know there has to be a separation between people who have really cool ideas, either in like reinforcement learning, video stuff, audio stuff, um, all kinds of really cool projects uh, in code. But it just they don't. There's no access to a machine like this. So I'm very interested to see. Um, like I said, no promises, can't say that anything will for sure happen there, but um, I just wanna see. So anyway, that opportunity is there. Uh, finally, just as a channel update, the Neural Networks from Scratch series, probably one to two months, one month is really cutting it close. I highly doubt that the videos will start coming out. Um, my goal there is to finish the public, well, p public, it's for backers, but it, finish that, that draft from cover to cover. So get a full first draft done. And then my plan is to go start doing the videos. Uh, and then as we're doing the videos, keep kind of honing in on that draft and improving that draft. Uh, because my main focus is delivering the book on time to people who have purchased the book. If you have purchased the book, you should already have access to that draft. And that draft just got a huge update. Basically everything from beginning to training a model is done. So now we're getting into kind of the actual you know, tweaking a model, doing having like training and testing data and what, what to look for as your model trains. So in terms of actually coding the neural network, uh, that's all done now. So so uh, if, if you are on that, uh, definitely go check out the draft if you're not aware of that update. Also, if you want access to that draft, if you're just dying to get access to the, the neural networks from scratch series, you can pre-purchase the or pre-order the book and you get access to the draft. It's in a Google Doc. And so you can not only see what other people's comments were, you can ask questions and stuff yourself like in line with the text. Uh, and that's actually been working pretty well. So um, a couple of hiccups on the way, <laughs> getting that many people. I, I didn't expect there to be like, I don't even know what we're up, like maybe 1300 people now. <laughs> so getting that many people into a Google Doc was actually quite challenging, um, which is sort of surprising for it being a Google product. But anyway, that was interesting, but that's all solved. So yeah, make sure if you do have access that, uh, or if you should have access that you do have access. Uh, and again, you can either email me or post a comment below, I suppose, but the best thing is probably to email me in that case. So anyway, I think that is everything. Uh, if you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever on any of this stuff, the chatbot stuff, the submission stuff, neural networks from scratch stuff, feel free to leave those below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in another video.